So I decided to do something a little different today. We are going to do a case study. Hello everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified diabetes educator, and a certified nutrition support clinician and owner of KimroseDietitian.com. That's a mouthful to say. So today we're going to do something a little different. We are going to look at some case studies. And the reason why we're looking at case studies is because for your dietetic career, you're going to be able to need to identify certain things that are going on with your patient. So we're going to look at this case study. So just let's just jump into it. So you have a 47 year old man who was admitted to the hospital, sign pulse fall and fracture of right femur. Preliminary blood tests demonstrate that his blood alcohol level was two times the normal limit and he presents with altered mental status. Secondary to his altered mental status, patient is unable to provide you with any weight or diet history, but his wife states that he is six feet, one inches tall. His usual body weight is 195 pounds and he unintentionally lost 16% over the past six months. She also tells you that he is a frequent alcohol drinker, drinking on a daily basis. His current body weight is 164 pounds and his calculated BMI is 21.6, which is considered to be normal. However, after you do your nutrition focused physical findings, you notice that he has fat and muscle wasting. On hospital day number two, patient goes for an ORIF to fix that fracture to his right femur. After surgery, he is confused and he is eating poorly. He's eating an oral diet poorly, so the physician orders enteral nutrition. His lab values after ordering enteral nutrition show that his potassium level is 2.8, his phosphorus level is 1.8 and his magnesium level is 1.4. What is going on with this patient? So of course, as a dietitian, we are going to be involved in the enteral nutrition. That's, that's the given. But you notice that these certain lab values are a little off. So let me know what do you think is going on? Comments in the comment section below. I'm going to give you guys some some time to think about it and I'm going to give you all that information again. So this particular patient has refeeding syndrome. These are the classical signs of refeeding syndrome. So refeeding syndrome is characterized by fluid and electrolyte shifts and can happen if a patient is fed orally, enterally, or parenterally. It is a rapid depletion of potassium, phosphorus, as well as magnesium. And this happens when a carbohydrate rich nutrition support is initiated. So if free feeding syndrome is not corrected, in the most severe cases, it can lead to death. So let's look at some of the risk factors for refeeding syndrome. So the risk factors include malnutrition, poor oral intake, which was seen specifically in this case study, any fistulas, any uh, gastrointestinal losses due to an ileostomy, alcohol abuse, which was seen in this case, poorly controlled diabetes, cancer, anorexia nervosa, and irritable bowel disease, just to name a few. So for me, any patient that comes in my hospital, my facility, which has been eating poorly for an extended period of time, or has even um, alcohol abuse, I always monitor the phosphorus, potassium, as well as magnesium. So what to do in the case of individuals that may be at risk for refeeding syndrome? So this is what Aspen recommends, and Aspen is the American Society of Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition. So they recommend for anyone that may be at risk for refeeding syndrome that 25% of their energy be provided on day one, and then there be a continual gradual increase of energy until goal is met over the next few days. 
specifically the next three to five days so that there is a gradual increase. So besides starting enteral or parenteral nutrition at a low rate to prevent um, tolerance issues as well as um, high blood sugars respectively, this is another reason why nutrition support needs to be started at a very low rate and then increased gradually until the goal rate is met. So if there is a concept that you didn't understand in class or in rotation, please go ahead, put that in my Google Forms link below and I will make a video about it to address your concerns. Thank you for watching. As usual, remember to comment, like, subscribe, and share this video. Have a good day.